Chinese President Xi Jinping is now wrapped up his three-day meeting with Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin by pledging to shape a new world order. Yeah, and listen to this language. Xi told Putin that they are driving changes not seen in a century. Is the United States dollar under threat? Well, the US dollar became the backbone of the global economy after World War II because of America's robust economy, its democracy, and its transparent regulatory systems, which made the nation seem like a safe place for international investors. But now the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa have announced plans to develop a new currency. Their goal is to reduce reliance on the US dollar and other Western currencies as well. Steve, are they ready for this? China is now trying to replace the U.S. dollar uh, with their currency in global trade. What do you think of that story, uh, Steve? Well, China's several years has made very clear, along with the Russians, they want to downgrade the dollar because they think that'll enhance their power around the world. And certainly the way we've treated the dollar over the year has gone in that direction. However, people are not going to trust the Chinese yuan. You may get these one-off deals like they're doing with the French, but China does not have real capital markets. China has capital controls. And so in terms of currency, people are going to prefer the dollar to the yuan. And uh, so in that, in that sense, uh, I think uh, we've got some time to get our house in order. But on the other hand, people do believe a little bit of, of Xi's brokering of the Iran-Saudi Arabia deal not too long ago. He is trying to portray himself as being a, a, a world leader. Right. Now, it's not that credible in, in the Western world, but it is becoming more credible in, in, in developing countries. And that's really uh, the audience he's aiming at. And Ambassador, what do you make of the release, uh, the joint statement Putin and Xi release um, after their meeting, effectively calling the U.S. and its allies a major security threat in Asia? Um, we know that there's a debate over the South China Sea, that there's this kind of uh, potential war with Taiwan hanging in the balance between China and that nation. Which means if you are a human rights activist or a Christian, authorities can now use this new technology to punish you if you engage in activities they consider anti-government. What China is doing is setting the world for the fulfillment of the prophecy in Revelation 13 verse 17 which says, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You might be asking what China is doing that is setting the world for the fulfillment of the prophecy about quote and unquote no buying and selling. Now let's have a look at what China is doing and how it is linked to this prophecy. Well, China is pushing ahead into a cashless society. It's creating a new digital currency to replace paper money and coins. It will also give the Communist Party total knowledge of how the Chinese people are spending their money. And that opens the door for unprecedented government control. George Thomas has the story. The Chinese were the first in the world to invent paper money back in the 7th century. Now, more than 1400 years later, China is again on the cusp of creating a new form of government currency that some say could pose a serious economic threat to America and the West. China is about to launch one of the most revolutionary financial projects in the world. They're not cryptocurrencies. Uh, they're not so-called stable coins. In effect, they are uh, the national uh, physical currency of a country just represented in a digital form. Eric Bethel is the former U.S. executive director of the World Bank. Bitcoin near record highs, crossing 23,000. He says while the world fixates on private cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But the digital yuan isn't a payment system, it's actual money. Beijing is busy building a digital version of its own currency, the yuan, also known as the renminbi, to control its citizens and eventually threaten the dominance of the U.S. dollar. They pretty much created all of the building blocks uh, that will allow a central bank digital currency to, to flourish. And Yaya Fanusi, a former economic and counter-terrorism analyst in the CIA, says China's goal is to replace cash with a digital currency that's controlled by the communist government's central bank. China has said for a while that it expects to pretty much be a cashless society in the future. So the idea is that cash notes, 
uh, coins will no longer be around and that people will be using a uh, digital currency that's going to be in their wallets. That digital currency will also be issued by the government bank, allowing what Congressman Michael McCall, the top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, says is unprecedented access to people's financial transactions. This will give them uh, data on behavior, uh, on uh, how people, how they spend. And giving Beijing the power to track that spending in real time. There will be a point where the People's Bank of China is going to be able to uh, look, peer inside of every single transaction that everyone does 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Which means if you are a human rights activist or a Christian, authorities can now use this new technology to punish you if you engage in activities they consider anti-government. This technological um, ability is something that the government has never had before. It always had to go to companies to say, OK, cut off this person. Now, the Chinese government, I think, with sort of the, the proverbial the flip of a switch, can make people fall in line by cutting off their access to money. Eventually, U.S. and other foreign companies doing business in China will be required to use the government's new digital currency payment system. There's a competitive issue. There are, I'd say, even cybersecurity issues, privacy issues. You're handing over your data to the Chinese Communist Party by participating in this digital currency system. The U.S. dollar is the world's dominant reserve currency. China's renminbi is number eight. Beijing's ambition is to eventually supplant the dollar's global dominance with the digital yuan. The big concern is internationally, especially for the U.S., is in the long term, this is an important step. This is what I would call a fintech, a financial technology development. And the issue is that China is thinking decades in advance. It's not thinking about the next two to three years, you know, per se. In June, the communist government handed out more than $6 million worth of its digital currency to its citizens as part of a series of trials around the country. The first kicked off in Beijing, allowing residents there to use two government bank apps to test digital payments. China then plans to make its big digital currency splash at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Now that the world's largest authoritarian regime has launched this first-of-a-kind sovereign digital currency, some in the U.S., like Congressman Mike Waltz, worry Beijing will use this form of payment to also skirt economic sanctions. The Chinese government convinces countries like Burma, Iran, North Korea, and others to do business in uh, that Chinese digital currency. It will also allow uh, uh, China and those countries to work around uh, one of our most powerful tools, which is sanctions. Based on history, Waltz believes China is only too happy to share the technology with other rogue regimes that seek to enhance their own surveillance capabilities over their citizens. So that those other countries in Africa, the Middle East and elsewhere can dominate their people in line with the Chinese version of government. But that data then comes back to Beijing so that they will literally, through facial recognition, be able to monitor the globe. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, if you've ever wondered some, about some passages in the Bible, how can a government restrict the population so that you cannot buy or sell unless you have a particular mark? Uh, well, this is the answer. Uh, this is we're literally being set up for that kind of government control. Uh, the Chinese government is pushing ahead on many fronts uh, to restrict what its population can and cannot do. Uh, they already restrict uh, the right of assembly. Uh, they already restrict the uh, religious freedom. Uh, they certainly restrict political speech and any speech that is critical of their government. Uh, and the way they run things is definitely cracked down on. All you have to do is look at what's happened in Hong Kong over the past just two years, and you get a very clear picture of where they're going. But they want to control, and they're doing it right now with social media scoring, where if you don't score a particular way, you're not allowed to travel. Uh, that's already in place. But just imagine a government that if you step out of line, uh, they can now turn off all your money and do it instantly. 
Uh, so you cannot buy or sell. You don't have the right in the marketplace to participate anymore. That's what digital currency allows a government to do. And if you think it's just going to happen in China, think again. The Federal Reserve already has a study group looking at a digital currency for the United States. Why are they doing that? Because they're afraid China will usurp the U.S. and become the world currency. The digital currency is taking over. So you see all the action happening in the stock markets, the various markets for Bitcoin, other digital currencies. Uh, their rapid rise and people becoming overnight millionaires, billionaires, trillionaires based on uh, the value of these digital currencies. And so the Federal Reserve wants to get in on that action to protect the U.S. dollar uh, as the world currency. We depend on that right now. We're spending ourselves into oblivion. And what allows us to do that is that we have the world's digital currency. So we're essentially borrowing against our value of our currency in order to have a $2 trillion deficit. Well, that party has to come to an end at some point in time. Uh, China is waiting for that party to end, uh, and they want to step on the world stage with digital currency. This digital currency system is now gaining popularity around the world. Unfortunately, at the end of that, you and I will now be subject to a government that may not agree with your opinions, may not agree with your religion, may not agree with the people you hang out with and they would absolutely restrict your access to that digital currency in an effort to control you. That's how you get fulfillment of the Bible prophecy in Revelation 13 verse 17 that says and that no one may buy or sell except one who has mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The serious issue here is that this digital currency system is being linked to climate change as it spreads around the world. Every movement you make can and will be tracked and not only that, but tracking also your individual carbon emission. To track your individual carbon emission means they have to get involved in your everyday life activities. For how they are going to accomplish that, watch this video next. So if our brains are connected, and you record, for instance, what are you possibly uh, thinking, what are you, uh, basically what areas of your brain are, are being stimulated at a certain point. Uh, there is even like devices that can collect what you're seeing, uh, measuring your feelings either through uh, facial recognition devices, micro muscle movements and so on. Uh, this data is going to be stored somewhere, so it might be in a cloud service. Uh, what will be this cloud service? Where is the, the servers being located? Is it in Brazil? Is it in China? Is it in the United States? So depending on the jurisdiction, you have a different approach regarding how that data will be treated. So this is point number one. Point number two is that we become, uh, therefore, sensors. So when you meet a new person and you shake hands, will we have to sign like a privacy notice to talk with that person like uh, the person will say so this is my terms of uh, use so you have to click this button before we start talking because everything that we'll be talking will be recorded and so on uh, this is my privacy notice and say no no I don't agree so okay bye bye I cannot talk to you so that's the type of things uh, that we have to think about because when the human brain and like the human body becomes full of sensors, data is being collected, and there is legislation that actually requires the consent of other people in order to collect data about them. So this is like, sounds like a crazy example, but actually by law, that is already required.